Good morning guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another episode of Rift Amps. Right, so just marking out the next Ainsley Lister signature build. So I'm just doing all my marks and things on the chassis so I can drill it, punch it, do all my holes. I mark the top up. I just need to do the front and rear panels so I can get that done. But do you remember, probably a couple of months ago now, I had the chap who wanted me to build him uh, that high watts and then yeah, we backed out. But then I started saying that, you know, using these blank chassis, you know, JTM 45 size chassis, you can do lots of different circuits in that format. And if you're prepared to work on a new layout, then um, you can, you know, it's really flexible. And one of the ones that I drew up for everybody, and which is available to download on the website, is the Trainwreck Express. And what I've done is I've done two versions, one of them with the standard value components and the other one that uses the modern E12 values. So um, I did say at some point I'll get around to building this because the layout I've done at the moment is all theoretical. So I need to build it and then make some improvements and, and tweak it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that build. And I'm going to do it. The Trainwreck Express um, does work with 6v6s as well, but we're going to do the EL34 version. So I'm going to mark this chassis up, get it drilled to roughly where I think it should be. And then I'm going to build that circuit into this chassis using my layout and then once that's built i can update the the paperwork it's all on the on, in the download section of the website so you can download all of this and, and if you want to have a go yourself but i i just always wanted to build one of these in this format so that's what i'm going to do so now uh, once this one is built it is going to be for sale so if you're interested in a rift built uh train wreck express um then get in touch i'll let you know what it will cost and i think we'll do it just as a head we'll just stick it in a head cabinet um maybe a plexi style head cabinet or a rift style one we'll see but i want to build that circuit obviously if i sell it i can't call it a train wreck express i'll call it something else so we'll come up with something but if you're interested in a rift built train wreck express in my format in my things get in touch let me know and we can work out a deal Okay, so the Swiss Ainsley Lister build is now uh, done, or at least fired up on the bench. Um, I've fired it up, I've gone through it, I've measured all the voltages, everything's good. Uh, play tested it, it sounds great. All I'm waiting on now is for Ainsley to come and play test it, sign it off. He's currently on tour though, so um, he's got a weak gap uh, in between in the middle of his tour so he's going to come and sign it off then and then once he's done that um the cabinet is on its way to me so we can get it all boxed up and finished and done so yeah really happy with this one sounds great looks good good news happy this is the next pr18 build this one is a 240 volt uh black panel pr18 this one is for Darren. Um, I haven't made much progress on this one or on the chassis build, um, but I've just got the board done. So I've drilled the board out, fit the eyelets, and I've just populated it. So I need to do my underboards, my overboards, and my flying leads on that. Then I can do make the next step, the next... I can do the next stage of chassis wiring, then we can get the board lowered in and get this thing wired up. So that's coming along too. And I've actually found some time to crack on with my next prototype build. So um, I've got some bits populated and in, got my pots along the front, got my sockets in along the bottom, started doing some wiring. I've drilled and Put the eyelets into the board so i need to populate that and get that going so shouldn't really be showing you this because it's secret but i just can't help myself yeah so pr18 black panel on the go Ainsley, the swiss Ainsley list that is done and um what else oh yes good news on the um uh dexter 
This is the Dexter that's off to swing Singapore. Uh, this is all done now. Uh, Cabinet will be with me Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Yeah, that's right. So when that's here, um, turn that around, get this thing boxed up and done. Um, so I am thinking, because I, I get a lot of inquiries about the Dexter, about whether I make it a permanent addition to the lineup. So, um, yeah, convince me on that. The reverb unit is essentially done. Uh, sounds great, runs great. I've just got to assemble it back into the cabinet and do the rest of that. And the basement, um, I've given it a service. It's now, it appears to be running great, but um, it needs another heat cycle. So after the weekend, I will get this one fired up again, test it and see where we are. Right, you'll have to excuse the kind of jerry-rigged setup that I've got here, but I've got the tape deck um, mounted on some blocks, so it's elevated. I didn't want to install it back into the cabinet just while we're testing. I've got the... Uh, speaker connected the, the wire connected back up via some test leads uh, the unit is on and I can hear the spindle or the, the motor going I put the tape in and I've got my secondary microphone here that I've just listening up to the speaker so hopefully this will pick up um, anything that's on the tape when we play it so uh, the unit is on the volume is down at the moment and I've got the tone control as well quite low but we'll press play and then I'll bring the volume up and hopefully you can see or hear should I say um, what's going on this is the volume no school buses no school meals or free milk it makes one wonder if everyone has gone too soft these days Fetching and carrying everywhere. Mind you, it was very tough going and we had our tears with chillbanes, etc. And I had a job of getting into our high button boots or lace ups. How many of us possess a button hook these days? I guess some of the young people wouldn't even know what it was. To carry on from there, on my, my reminiscences, <laughs> reminiscences. Um, I was talking to you about my school days. There was um, in my in the infant school, the headmistress or such as she was called then was a dear lady, one of these real Victorian. No, I don't want to, I don't want to. Testing, testing, testing. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> Okay, we have to stop when there's music so I don't get a copyright strike. But um, first of all, we heard what appeared to be very low output, a very quiet um, recording. And it, that was at the volume at maximum. Because anyway, we went on to the next part of the recording on the tape that we actually got a, a, you know, a significant volume jump. So obviously when they were recording uh, that audio... There was issues with that microphone, whoever that was. So uh, yeah, that's it. Sounds great. Very low noise. The tone control works, so you can really dial in the voices. Quite impressed with that. Good output. Everything seems to work great. So I'm going to leave this running. Listen to the rest of the tape. And give it a good soak test, and then we'll see where we are after that. Right, we'll call that done. That's great. I'm really happy with that. Everything seems to be working great. No issues. We'll bung it all back together and call it done. Feels like we've just had one, but next Monday uh, we've got another bank holiday, another public holiday. So it's only going to be a four-day week next week. So I'm, I don't know whether to put, to not do a video on Wednesday next week and 
put it up, put one out, um, and just save everything for the Sunday instead. I don't know. We'll see. So um, if I don't get, I mean, the Wednesday videos are always optional. You know, they were never guaranteed. It was always the Sunday videos that were the most important. So um, yeah, I've got a three day weekend. I am actually coming down with something. You can just feel it in the back of your throat. So um, yeah, I don't want to give this to anyone. So. Um, no, sorry, that's what I meant. Obviously, I don't want to give it to anybody, but I, you know, I don't want to make it worse, so I need to look after myself. Um, so I am racing on Saturday, but then thankfully I'm going to have the Sunday and the Monday off work, so that should be enough rest time to get myself sorted. Uh, got some Millisiums to build and bits and pieces, and the Vox AC30, which is there on the shelf. Um, seems to be okay at the moment so i don't think I, th I think the issue he's having is with the cabinet itself and not something in the chassis so that's what i'm going with that at the moment okay onwards with the train wreck express build so uh i haven't got a obviously i've got a layout that i've done on the computer you, again you can download this and i always draw them one to one scale so when you print out if you print out the board at one to one scale and it's 14 inches wide by two and a half inches tall uh, it will then fit perfectly in your chassis so this is my uh you've got the board material on the back i printed out my design stuck it to the front and then i can go through and drill all my holes uh so i can make the board up but what i've also got to do again because this is a brand new prototype build you know i haven't done one of these before in this format so we need to work out where on the chassis we're going to drill you know where the sockets are going to go and bits and pieces like that and the first thing i need to work out is the valve sockets so i've got three preamp valve sockets v1 v2 and v3 v1 is our first two gain stages and uh v2 sorry v1 and v2 are our gain stages and tone stack v3 is our phase inverter and then we've got our two output valves our el34s now because i've drawn this in a one-to-one -one scale i can pos mark my valve socket positions relative to the board which is why i printed out the board now obviously the board is going to sit this way in the chassis right but i'm marking on the other side so what i do is i print out another copy just on paper but i do a mirror image you see how that's back to front yeah so then what i can do is on my chassis itself now i always do my valve sockets in a line one and a quarter inches from this edge and i simply use a set square to one and a quarter inches and that lines up and then i can do my line and that's my reference point and to make it even easier i always do v1 one and a quarter inches in from the left hand side as you look at it so it's one and a half inches one and a quarter inches up one and a quarter inches in and that's my v1 socket so Let's see if we can make sure you've got a good angle on this. So you can see what I'm going to do. So I get my reverse image of my board. And I can see on my layout, I roughly want V1. Zoom you in. To be in line with halfway through this 100k resistor. Approximately, right? So then I can line this up. Can you see that purple doesn't show up very well does it so i can then here's the 100k resistor and i can roughly line that up in the same way so that's approximately where my board is going to sit and all i'll do is i'll just put i'll weigh it down so it's not going to move can you see what i've done now I can go through and roughly 
work out where my next socket goes. So V2 is going to line up roughly with this eyelet here, which is this one here. So it's about there. V3 lines up roughly with this eyelet here, which is this one. V4 lines up with this hole here. And finally, V5 lines up well, it's it's approximately just to the right hand side of this eyelet. So um, about there. Now these are only rough because then what I like to do is I know that there are minimum distances required between output valves. And it's the rough rule is 1.7 times the envelope diameter. That's a rough rule. You can change it and move it and sort things out. So uh, what I want is, where's my ruler gone? Sorry, excuse me. I usually go for, for EL34s, a two and a half inch spacing between my output valves and here we've got two and a quarter so we i'll just move this one over slightly and we'll go for it there so that's what i want preamp valves absolutely fine as they are so that's those done that's those first um markings done on the chassis and from there, I can then work out that I need a, a grommet here for my output jack wires on the rear. So I need to work out where they're going to go. I need a hole here for my output transformer wires. And that will be approximately halfway between these two. And obviously further up. Uh, I've got some other bits and pieces here that I need to work out where they're going to go. But that's how I do it. Now, if I come along and get the big ruler, and this is all prototyping, so it's always a, you know, I knew V1 was at one and a quarter inches. There it is. So we'll call it 1.25. V2 is going to be at three inches because that's the nearest mark there. V3 is at six and one eighth. Six and one eighth. Uh, this one here, V4, I've currently got down at nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters. And that puts this one at 12 and a quarter. All right. So, in when I do a full layout for these, I can then put those in. I always like to work in inches on, on chassis. It's just one of those things. So that's my, where I probably would put my sockets for this. Um, you, I might move these a quarter of an inch that way, slightly, maybe. So that's at 10 and 12 and a half. Have a think about that. The other thing on the Trainwork Express is if you've got this huge resistor here, this 1K 25 watt. So I've have, I might have one on the shelf. If not, I've got to order one in and see the, the actual physical size because then I can work out where that's going to sit. All right. So I've, I've got all these things to work out. But yeah, making good progress. But that's how I do it. So I print out, just to recap... The board itself onto the material ready for drilling and marking and punching but then if i'm doing a chassis layout for the first time i do a reverse image one in one-to-one -one scale but i can line up with everything and work out roughly where i want everything to be so that's how you do that well that's it then guys thank you very much for watching once again i'm really excited about this train wreck build so as i said if you are interested in it pop me an email, give me a call, and we'll see if we can work something out. So please give this video a thumbs up. 
comments down below. Join the channel if you haven't already, like these guys have. Um, if not, just subscribe. It's the best way to help the channel. And I shall catch you all at the next one.